In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today we remember the intentions of Jessica Mallow. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and ask for the Lord's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come to our help with mighty strength, that what our sins impede, the grace of your mercy may hasten. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day they will sing this song in the land of Judah. A strong city we have. He sets up walls and ramparts to protect us. Open up the gates to let in a nation that is just, one that keeps faith. A nation of firm purpose you keep in peace, in peace for its trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. He humbles those in high places and the lofty city he brings down. He tumbles it to the ground, levels it with the dust. It is trampled underfoot by the needy, by the footsteps of the poor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm responds, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This gate is the Lord's. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. Yet it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The 
First of all, score yourself bonus points for coming today at 7 o'clock and not at 9. Okay, so there, there was a mistake in the bulletin and the uh, Thanksgiving schedule somehow got repeated. So today's Mass is at 7. Yes, it's 7, yeah, 7 o'clock, not 9 o'clock. And tomorrow's Mass is at 7 o'clock, not 8 o'clock. So just a little, little word to the wise there. Um, in the uh, readings that we have today, um, we jump ahead in Isaiah all the way up to chapter 26, and there's a whole series of oracles um, that talk about um, things that will happen in the days that are to come, as Isaiah is prophesying, to all the different countries that surround Israel. So from chapters 12 on, and there's um, all sorts of things that will come, and even times of exile. <clears throat> and then by the time we get to chapters 25 and 26, where we are today, we're now getting some signs of hope as we see the Lord's intervention that the Lord comes to restore the people, he comes to renew the covenant, and it's described here in this reading as the creation of a strong city. We have a strong city with strong walls and ramparts to protect us, and so let in a nation that is just. And so that solidly built city, so thinking of Mount Zion, thinking of the city of Jerusalem, um, this is meant in a very prophetic sense to be a source of strength. And what is the source of that strength? It is the Lord himself. It's the Lord who intervenes. In fact, by reading all, the, all those preceding chapters, we actually see how vain are the efforts of those who do their own work apart from the Lord. That, though, that work is always brought to naught. It's only when they come to the Lord that we see the strength of the city that becomes uh, something in which the people can put their trust and they can trust it forever. He humbles those who exalt themselves, but instead then that lofty city is brought down, but not so for the Lord's city. And, turning the page, we then turn to the Gospel. It seems to me that this almost seems to be a contradiction. It seems like we have almost an opposite message, and listen to it in this way. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, meaning we just call upon the Lord. Lord, you do it for us. The Lord will take care of everything. We don't have to do a thing. So rather than saying that, instead, we should be like those who build our house solidly on rock, meaning it's up to us to make sure that we put into practice these things in order to build that solid foundation and to have a strong house with strong walls that will withstand that effort. Now, why do I say that this seems to be a contradiction? Isaiah says, Who's, whose city is it? Who built the walls? Who did the work? The Lord did the work. The gospel? The gospel says that we need to build on a solid foundation. So who does the work? Then we're responsible for doing the work. And in fact, if all we do is we say, Lord, Lord, you do it for us, the gospel condemns that. He says, if you don't actually engage in that work yourself, if you're not the one listening to his word and putting it into practice and building that solid foundation, building your structure on a solid foundation, then that will be wiped out. So whose job is it? Is it the Lord's job to do that? Is he, is he the one that builds the city? Is it our job? Is it our job to build that solid house? So which one is it? We have a, a choice that is put before us. I think that in the Advent season, one of the things that we are always focused on and preparing for is Jesus' birth, which is the mystery of the Incarnation. And what is that? It is the mystery of God becoming man. It is that mystery by which God and man are joined together in the hypostatic union, in the person of Jesus Christ. When we talk about the church, we say the church is divine and human. And it's difficult to kind of point out, you say, well, here's the human part, here's the divine part, any more than we can look to Jesus. And let me find his human part and his divine part. They always have to work together, and therein is a kind of a mystery. So I think the answer between this supposed contradiction is really, the answer is both. So it is both God's initiative and it is our initiative when we cooperate with the Lord. So who gets wel welcomed into the city God has prepared? It's a nation that is just, faithful, and humble. And those are important characteristics that we need to take to heart, as Isaiah encourages us. And when we do our part and we build up our house on that foundation, where did the foundation come from? The foundation is the one that God gives us because... It is built on that solid foundation of the words of Jesus Christ. Everyone who listens to my words and acts on them is like a man who built his house on rock. So the word of God is a solid foundation. So it's both human and divine. It's both a combination of our good efforts, but always done in the name of the Lord, 
and always putting our trust that the Lord is the one who ultimately blesses that work. Sometimes it's kind of a little hard in a practical circumstance to wrap our mind around that. He says, is this God's initiative or my initiative or how, how, is, how is this brought about? Um, when we get to specific cases and we think especially about specific challenges, that can be kind of a little um, difficult thing to, to think through and to come to understand. But the fact that it is a cooperation or a union of both God's efforts and our efforts is, I think, an important lesson um, that this Advent season always pushes us toward. So we look to the coming of our Savior, who ultimately brings us the gift of salvation. Let us do our part in building up that kingdom and preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah. <clears throat> Let us present our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God, that we might humble ourselves before the Lord and prepare a way to welcome our, our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those responsible for preaching and teaching the faith, that they may do so with clarity and integrity. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the leaders of nations that they might work for a true peace throughout all the countries of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the sick, the suffering, for those who are in, who are in particular distress. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all of the faithful departed, remembering all of those amongst our family and friends, and we remember the intentions for this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for the Church, let us pray. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, <clears throat> and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. 
that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Louis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow is our first Friday, um, and just following both the online signups and the signups uh, in the uh, Narthex, uh, I think there's just two half hours where there's a gap. It's four and four thirty or something. It's right in that in that time frame. Uh, I think everything else is, has been filled in. But I just draw that to your attention. So we'll see you tomorrow morning at seven, not at eight. <laughs> okay. So seven o'clock uh, morning mass, and then adoration throughout the day. And we appreciate everyone's help just in filling in. So we spend time before our Lord. And we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.